Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health, everyone. Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Sean Hashmi here. Dr. Hashmi, today, can you please explain to us how do, how do you treat low or high blood sodium levels? And is the blood sodium level related to how much salt someone eats in their diet? Awesome. So very complex questions. The medical terminology, since we try to make everything sound a little bit more complicated than it should be, is, is when you have a high concentration of salt, we call that hypernatremia, and a low concentration of salt, we call that hyponatremia. So let's start with hyper first. And a lot of what we talk about in hyper will also apply to hyponatremia. So hypernatremia is where the level of sodium concentration in blood is too high. Now, this is important because concentration talks about how many molecules in a volume of water. So, for example, let's say I have a cup, a small cup, and um, Michelle was drinking coffee earlier, so she has a mug that she's drinking coffee in. And let's say that I take three sugar cubes, I put it into that mug, just three. So now my concentration is three sugar uh, cubes in one mug. But imagine if I now get a bigger mug, that's about the size of two of our regular mugs, and I still have three sugar cubes. Now, when I look at the concentration, it's the same number of sugar cubes, but the bottom number is much bigger. So overall, it looks like the amount of sugar is much less. But let me ask you the million dollar question. Did I change the amount of sugar or did I just merely increase the volume in it. In this particular case, mm -hmm. when we talk about hypohypernatremia, when the word concentration is used, it's talking about how much sodium in how much volume. So if I wanted to make somebody hyper or too much sodium, I could either put a bunch of salt, which takes a lot more effort, or what else could I do? Reduce the water down that's there. So in other words, if you want to go and cause somebody to have hypernatremia, which would be defined as a serum sodium concentration greater than 145, 135, 145 is normal. The way I could do it is I could just dehydrate you. If I dehydrate you, I give you a bunch of coffee to drink. You go out and pee a lot. Now you're dehydrated. Even if I haven't changed the amount of sodium you have in your body, it looks like you're hypernatremic. There are conditions like diabetes insipidus where just so much urine is coming out that it's hard to keep up with it. And that urine is very dilute. So what ends up happening is, is the bottom number is going down. So the amount of volume in your body is lower and therefore it looks like your sodium is going up. So that's another cause. Diuretics will do it. Kidney disease will do it. People who have burns or losing fluids will do it. All sorts of medications can do it. But when it comes to what you really want to understand is hypernatremia and hyponatremia are both deadly. So hypernatremia, when it happens, you'll find that the first symptoms are you'll be thirsty, but then it starts to progress from thirst to weakness, to headaches, to confusions, to seizures, to coma, to even death. So hypernatremia, just like hypo we'll talk about in a second, is a very important thing to understand. And when that's the case, how fast you treat it also matters because you don't want to treat it too rapidly. There's all sorts of clinical criteria, but the treatment is really will give patients fluids. And those fluids tend to be fluids that have lots of water and very low solute or very low sodium in there so that we're trying to dilute out the stuff going on. So it's very little to do with the fact that the sodium concentration is changing. It has to do with the fact that the water concentration is changing. In some cases, what we end up doing is we'll give people water and we'll also give them certain diuretics that will get rid of some water, but they'll take out some salt with it. So we're able to reduce the salt by getting rid of it through the kidneys and replacing it with just more water going on. There are all sorts of more complex treatments, including worst case scenario, where sometimes we just need to dialyze the patient. And for the dialysate, we use very low sodium to run across the blood so that we can go ahead and pull some of the salt out of the blood going on. So now that's hypernatremia. Let's go into hyponatremia. So hypo means low natremia or sodium going on. So low sodium, remember it's a concentration. So hyponatremia doesn't necessarily mean that it's low sodium molecules. It could mean that there's a lot of water inside the body. So hypernatremia was 
not necessarily more sodium in the body. It could mean just less water. Now we're talking about the opposite. So for hyponatremia, you have low concentration of sodium in the blood. Concentration is always milliequivalents per volume. In this case, it's liters. Normal is 135 to 145. So by definition, hyponatremia is less than 135 milliequivalents per liter going on. So what can do it? Well, <clears throat> several things can do it. There is something called water intoxication where you would have to drink a whole lot of water, basically overcome the ability of the kidneys to pee it out. So you could definitely go ahead and do that. So it's not just how much, but how fast you're drinking that can do it. So there was a, a radio show back in the day, and, and this was taught to me in med school, so it's a long time ago. It was basically, well, when Nintendo Wii was out and the show was something about hold your Wii to win a Wii. So the idea was that if you could keep drinking water and not go use the restroom, you would win this Nintendo Wii. And what happened was the person drank a ton of water. They actually became hyponatremic. They went to bed and they never woke up. So hyponatremia can also be very dangerous. Other things that can cause hyponatremia is diuretics. So there are diuretics that will take salt with water out and you can lose enough salt that you start to become hyponatremic. Of course, vomiting, diarrhea can do the same thing going on if you're losing salt that way. There are all sorts of medications and pain medications that can do that. Oftentimes we see hyponatremia in liver disease, especially in advanced liver disease. And then there are certain things called uh, there's a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. So there's a condition called syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So antidiuretic means that it tends to hold on to water. And when it's inappropriate, that means it's going too much, holding on to too much water in your body. So the salt is being diluted. What's the side effects? Really important with severe hyponatremia especially as you start to go below 120 and definitely if you get down to 115 and below and even 110 and below is seizures, coma, and death. So hypo and hypernatremia are very important and we want to pay close attention. Now, when it comes to treating these things with hyponatremia, we also want to know how long has it existed? We classify this as acute or chronic. Acute means it's less than two days. 48 hours. Chronic means it's more than 48 hours. Most of the time, I can tell you, we have no idea how long somebody has been hyponatremic. But what we focus on is try to correct their sodium levels slowly unless they're having something serious. For example, there's confusion. Then we'll give them a very urgent thing where we give them IV salt to raise up the sodium levels very, very quickly going on. But if it's not that they're confused or coma or seizures or anything like that, we go very, very slowly because when you change the concentration, if you have low salt concentration in the blood and you start to raise that concentration very fast, you can actually start to pull water out of cells and cause the cells to shrink. And that can create all sorts of things. It can cause inflammation or edema in the brain going on. Same thing on the opposite side is, as you start to bring the salt level lower, that can drive water into cells going on and that can create all sorts of issues. So depending on the state of how severe the hyponatremia is, is we may do a simple thing like just cut down how much water they drink. So once again, keep in mind that hypo, hyper or low or high salt concentrations don't have a lot to do with salt. They have a lot to do with water going on. And there are so many medications that can cause hyponatremia. So our job as kidney doctors is always to look at what is the underlying conditions that could be causing this. Whew, that's a lot to talk about today. Watch it a couple times in case you missed any topics going on. But there you have hypo and hypernatremia. Thanks, Dr. Hashmi.